Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games. Actually from my home right now, did not have a chance to record this video in time for our normal 9 a.m. Eastern deadline, but at the beginning of the year I said hell or high water, we're going to do a video a day for Fast Effect, so getting this one done, the rest of the week should go pretty smoothly. We've got a curse scroll here for Matthew Richard on Infect, and I'm not going to lie, that boogie board for life totals not really going to be likely to be relevant. I think uh, either Pox is going to completely lock out this game, or Infect is going to just be dealing damage with Infect instead of life total. So poison counters do add up twice as fast, and there's not a lot you can do about them. They've continued that trend since originally printing poison way back in was it the dark i think poison counters were first introduced in the dark homelands brought us leeches and a hymn to torok getting dazed classic firefight here the curse scroll has resolved that is a card that i lost in the finals of a Scholars Tournament way back in the day against Melissa Del Toro, who now works at Wizards. And uh, she was on a Hatred deck, and I lost because I left... I did not leave in my Winter Orbs. I just figured the deck was so low to the ground that Winter Orb would not be particularly strong. And sure enough, Curse Scrolls ended up getting there as uh, I sat there with some cards that didn't interact with artifacts in my hand. Liliana is going to continue to chip away at Richard's hand and I think at this stage Ink Moth Nexus is probably going to be one of the more interesting cards. Whoa, Liliana the Last Hope going to the bin? That is very surprising. Let's see what else he has. Maybe he's got another Liliana already in hand. We've got a Liliana's Triumph. And that is going to provide some protection against Ink Moth Nexus, which is really the danger card here. Ink Moth Nexus could... Oh no, are we going to see this now? We've got an end step crop rotation. Eek. A Pendle Haven, so that's going to bump it up to two. Oh no, he's actually activating with Pendle Haven. Oh, Invigorate Berserk. Oh, and he's got it. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Crop rotation just killing out of nowhere as Matthew was in pretty good shape, had the Planeswalker down, was going to make it difficult for any threat other than Ink Moth Nexus to actually matter. You're talking the Blighted Agent or Glistener Elf. Both of those creatures, small, efficient, but susceptible to Liliana of the Veil and, you know, the Last Hope as well. Matthew has his work cut out for him now as that was kind of the, the type of draw that he was really hoping for. Both of these decks kind of meme decks in a sense, but you know, they are legit legacy decks. They can definitely win an event and they can go toe to toe with anything. Now they may not necessarily be favored per se and against the majority of the field, but a deck like Infect can actually do quite well in a field full of combo. It's very Delver-esque. The key difference being you're trading off removal for your combo pieces, uh, which can honestly make it a stronger matchup versus something like, say, Show and Tell. That can be a very difficult matchup. Puts them into a situation where they have to play the control. And again, Richard has the answer for this him to Torok. Now, it could have been worse. could have been a Veil of Summer. I'm not sure if Infect lists are running it, mostly because of how little the deck is played. I mean, Infect would definitely be able to utilize a card like Veil of Summer. It's got a blue-green mana base. A Thought Seize is resolving. Blighted Agent has hit the board. And 
Glistener Elf being snagged. Another Glistener Elf and a Ink Moth Nexus in hand. Chains of Mephistopheles comes down. It's a beautiful magic card, but I don't know that it's actually going to line up at all with Richard's hand. He just has a fistful of threats, which is really unusual. Typically with Infect, they have like a single threat, and then you're going to want to have a bunch of pump spells to go along with it. Instead, he could have up to four creatures down. Ink Moth Nexus times two, a Glistener, and a blight, uh, Blighted Agent. So, I don't know. Matthew may be putting the test exactly how well he can kill creatures with this deck. Chains of Mephistopheles. I've actually played alongside Curse Scroll and Anvil of Bogarden in one of my favorite decks from way back in the day. It wasn't good, but I had fun with it, trying to win really taught me a lesson about um like if you're playing to win like you pretty much need to actually play the best deck uh three poison coming across oh no just two poison okay i thought that was three i thought he pumped but no we've got an activation and casting of a glistener elf a blast zone at one which doesn't actually handle the whole situation. Oh, and here she is. The murder machine, Liliana the Last Hope, takes out that Blighted Agent. Now, these Ink Moth Nexuses still going to be a problem. But Glistener Elf is not long for this world. She is easily going to be able to clear him. And Matthew has a potential decision here as to whether or not to clear the Liliana. I don't feel like Infect has that option without knowing the contents of his hand. Oh, no. So he's going to look at the top three. Then he's going to discard and then draw a card. He loses a Windswept Peeth and grabs a mystery card. Ink Moth stands up. Pumps. Sends for three. And it is not a invigorate. Five damage has been pushed through. Smallpox. Land. Card in hand. And creature all going to go away. So three cards from Richard. We're going to bite the dust. And he's not actually going to be able to keep around this Glistener Elf no matter what he does. I mean, Liliana would have killed it anyways. Just getting that maximum impact. And we lose a Ink Moth Nexus as well. So there's five poison on board and the ability to push through two poison a turn with Pendlehaven plus Ink Moth. That that is slow going. There's going to be three more turns for Matthew to find a way to handle this Ink Moth Nexus, and he has plenty of ways. He very likely is even running Sinkhole, potentially. I'm not sure what the current Pox lists are. But in the past, they have run Sinkhole. Let me know in the comments if you've got a spicy Pox list. I'm sure people will be asking for pox lists in the comments, so we'll go ahead and pin that. Liliana just ticking up. A Glistener Elf being played. And we got Dark Ritual. Popping Blast Zone. And another Spirit. Just basically playing out all his cards here. I think Matthew kind of resigning. Going to let Richard cross the finish line, however. Ink Moth turns, pumps. Nine Poison. And it's now or never. He has to find an answer for this Ink Moth Nexus. Game one, the speed 
was really what kills in this game too. The fact that it's not a creature during Matthew's turn is everything. Otherwise, Lilian would have no problem murdering it. Nether Spirit. Oh, whoa! Castle Lochtwain actually allowing Matthew to draw a wasteland. And this is anybody's game now. Last Ditch Hail Mary. Activating Castle Lochtwain and actually finding a wasteland to be able to handle that Ink Moth Nexus. And Nether Shadow can actually start doing his work now. And Liliana can start making a horde of zombies as well. This has swung completely in the other direction. And unless Richard can find a crop rotation or an ink moth nexus, this is going to be Matthew's game. He does have tons of ways to deal with ink moth, but that was certainly in dramatic fashion, finding it at the end. Another shadow and his zombie buddies getting in there. And this will be the last swing as more zombies join the fray. Each turn, the amount of zombies is going to double. And wow, we are on to game number three. What an incredible top deck there for Matthew. We are tied a game apiece. Now, Richard's going to have the play here in Game 3, and speed can kill here with Infect. There are so many turn 2 wins in this deck. And I'm not really sure why it's it's not more popular. It probably doesn't have a great matchup versus Delver, just given how much removal they have. It may struggle versus Death and Taxes as well, trying to play multiple spells in a turn. Uh, but we've got a Noble Hierarch. Umazawa's Jite is also strong against it. I mean, the deck has some weaknesses, but it is really fun. And you can absolutely get turn two wins an assortment of different draws. We've got a Black Border Berserk. I actually used to play an Alpha Berserk in my Growatog list. That was back when people were kind of sus of the Alpha cards because of the corners, so it wasn't too expensive. Now Alpha has rightly claimed its spot at the top of the pile. It's definitely king of the mountain when it comes to rare versions of cards. Thoughts he's a bit of a decision here. And scale up the new Modern Horizons card. I am actually doing this from home as I mentioned at the top of the video. My daughter Ellie wants to pop in. She played in the middle school magic club and man that is something I really miss during this shutdown. Here she is. Noble Hierarch. A card that in a lot of matchups is really strong. Here it feels like it may just be walking into a smallpox for maximum impact. We've got a Leovold. Is this a Leovold? Oh, that can't be Leovold. It's got to be a Euro. We've got, it looks like two tropical islands. Yeah, so Euro drawing a card. No land drop. Gaining some life. Yeah, I do miss the Magic Club. We'll see about getting back to that. Oh, and Liliana, the last hope, hitting the ground, running, ramping up, and murdering the Noble Hierarch. That's going to make any of the Edict effects even stronger. We've got Ink Moth Nexus. Definitely the key card in the matchup so far. Game 1, stealing it. Game 2, answering it. The thing that gave Matthew a chance to force this game three. And now a him to Torok. Will it resolve for the first time here? It does. This is going to leave Richard with just a single card in hand. So far, he'd been able to ward off him to Torok with Spell Pierce and Daze. And now it has actually resolved and some real damage has been done. He's got a lonely Ink Moth Nexus. And now another. And he sends. And boy, I'm not even sure who wins this race at this point. Oh, wow. Sinkhole. And he's got the Wasteland. 
just bang, bang, shot them down. No more infect creatures on board, and Liliana ready to kill any top deck castable creatures. Two ink moths actually out of the deck. Whew, this is a tough spot here for Richard, facing down the three, mon three mana planeswalker, who's actually going to be able to go ultimate. That's one of the things about this Liliana is not only is she incredible at crowd control, but she's also a legit win condition. Chains. We're going to see a brainstorm in response. If this resolves, that will be the last one of the game. There's almost no situations where you're actually going to run a brainstorm out into the Chains of Mephistopheles. That's going to look like discard, draw, discard, draw, discard, draw, then put two back on top, which is an absolute disaster. Liliana ready to start bringing some zombies to the yard. Euro's going to be able to come back. I mean, he's very legit. We'll see if Matthew has an answer to him. I mean, just ultimating Lily does kind of answer him. His card draw is going to be neutered by the Chains of Mephistopheles. It's basically just going to end up milling. Liliana ultimates in a small box, bats this Euro away. Oh no, we've got a Daze. Daze keeps it. Daze keeps it on board. But Euro is going to get outclassed by these zombie hordes real soon. Right now you can force a block, but in no time there's going to be enough zombies to actually defeat Euro in combat. And they're just going to keep on coming. That emblem, much like poison counters, not really something you can do anything about. Disconnected. A couple of technical issues here from home. That was my light bulb being a little mouthy. Liana's able to keep ticking up. Guess you can get another emblem in a really long game. This one's not slated to go the distance. As these zombies are kind of creating a impossible situation. I, I don't know if... I guess you don't trade down. I guess you just lose one of them at this point. Or even just take the, take the hit. All right. Matthew, is he just taking the hit or is he chump blocking? He's going to block with three because of the Liliana. Only, only one of them is going to die. We've got a... Boy, that looks like anime dead. Oh, no, that's opposition agent. Flashing in an opposition agent, getting some, getting some damage... That does cut off the crop rotation aspect of the deck, which is nice. One of the only conceivable ways that Richard could possibly dig his way out of that, though it doesn't feel like it could be fast enough. Though I suppose a crop rotation and then top deck infect, or top deck invigorate, and then the next turn top deck invigorate again. I mean, that, that would potentially get there. But it is not to be as Liliana's emblem teams up with a whole host of support for Matthew to take this one down as Pox emerges triumphant against Infect. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. You can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know. Uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.